Good morning, good evening, and welcome to World of Warships. My name is Robin, and today we will be selling and reviewing the Tier 6 Tech Tree Pan American Cruiser Almirante Cochrane. But first of all, thank you very much for tuning in the video. I really appreciate it, and I hope you would enjoy your time here. What an absolute monster of a cruiser this is, and I honestly have no idea how this didn't blip on my radar sooner. I haven't really touched the Pan American Cruiser line that much, and actually free XP'd my way to the tier 8 when they released, so I completely missed out on the tier 6 entry. Forcing myself to go back to low tiers, let's say this opened my eyes. These cruisers and their playstyle are so unique and rewarding that just after a few games on them, they are quickly becoming my favorite ships to play. And well, today we are checking out one of my best games at tier 6 and perhaps the European server damage record for the ship. So, without further ado, let's take the Almirante Cochrane to battle. And here we are on the map Heaven, a domination mode with a southwest spawn in reach of Objective C, and perhaps my favorite part of the map to play on. Some good island cover around, a rather large portion of open water to our right, and that infamous corner on D8 that we will be trying to defend most of the game. Quite a large map too, especially for our limited firing range, so we will have to try and close the distance with our targets. Matchmaker put us against tier 5 and 7, no carriers, just a submarine on each team, and there aren't really any specific ships the Almirante here is scared of, even for a light cruiser. I will quickly list why I think this ship is almost unfair for its tier. First off, you get a specialized repair party that can heal almost 10,000 HP. You're looking at 8.9 km concealment with a full build. You are equipped with the same torpedoes as tier 8 Lightning. These have 8 km of range and over 15,000 alpha damage, paired with great firing angles and reload. And, cherry on top, your bow has a 30 mm icebreaker at tier 6. On the light cruiser, yeah. Oh, and you also get a strike ASWs too. You have drawbacks, of course, the entire really sucks, and your firing range is quite limited, only at 14.5 kilometers. And well, you only have AP shells, which is standard for the whole line, even though this armor piercing packs quite a punch in medium to close range, which is also the range these cruisers are meant to be played at anyway. And last but not least, you get the combat instruction feature, which we'll talk about more later. For now, let's try to focus on the game at hand. We've made our way quite close to the cap and there is already some action. Enemy Fubuki is revealed and our catapult fighter, which we launched a few seconds ago, will actually spot both enemy Mahan and Aoba right around the corner. That's not all, we also have an enemy submarine lurking around and a Nagato and Sharnhorse 43 in a division on this side with an enemy Texas at long range. Target rich environment already, but with the enemy battleships mostly grouped on the 4th and 5th line, we have an opening for a push against the IGN cruiser and the USN destroyer. So, with our hydroacoustic running, we are just full sending it, hoping to catch them off guard. And well, Aoba sure was not ready for that. Flat broadside, our first salvo actually fails to Citadel, but still does 8000 damage. The second salvo on the other hand, yeah, finds its mark. 7 Citadels for 22000 damage, crushing that broadside and granting us the first blood shortly after. No torpedoes in the water from the Aoba, so we move on to focus on the Mahan. Thankfully, the Japanese cruiser also did not have armor piercing loaded and we took minimal damage in that quick trade. Mahan actually beaches itself in panic and we decide to cut the engine to maintain line of sight. Even with the enemy battleships in the vicinity, I am willing to gamble with the fact that they won't get the salvos off in time or simply don't have the angle for it allowing me to keep the pressure and the spotting on that DD. Now, the AP shells don't have any specific fuses, meaning that Almirante Cochrane struggles to deal large amount of damage on destroyers overall. But a couple of more salvos later and the USN destroyer goes down anyway. Two frags and we can dash back in cover after a very successful engagement. Now, you could see that progress bar under the aiming reticle slowly filling up every time we landed a shot on target. That is the combat instructions system, filling up after scoring enough hits in a certain period of time. 
Upon activation and during its action time, combat instructions will drastically shorten the cooldown of all your consumables. This is a key aspect of the ship as the base cooldown for all consumables is extremely long and managing the most important consumables of all, your heal, is paramount to make the ship work in my opinion. In details, this cooldown reduction also works for your damage control party, which can come very handy if you mismanaged that. Using the Mahan's smoke here to take some pot shots at the pushing Nagato, we quickly stop shooting to maintain concealment. This is also the time to try and send out more torpedoes, which once again deal really high damage and have decent range. Not enough to fire them from stealth in all scenarios, but when ships are pushing into you like that, they are very usable. Not entirely sure what our Vauclin is doing right here. Following our path of destruction, he decides to rush that battleship division. Nothing I can do to help him other than use his spotting and destruction to engage the Nagato again with guns. We are seeing some oil leaks from the enemy submarine, but our ASW strike is out of range while the friendly Nelson is pushing in the sea cap from the other side of the island. In the meantime, we already lost two destroyers and a battleship and we are about to lose Vauclin too. Positive note is that we actually land a torpedo on Nagato, which caused a flood. Unfortunately, we lack the HE shells to set a following fire while his DCP is down. But our AP shells are actually doing pretty decent, chunking the Japanese battleship between 4 and 5,000 damage a salvo. We are of course keeping terrain between us and that division, classic cruiser tactic, especially since our shells are floaty enough to clear the rocks still. And our torpedoes, already reloaded, are in the water again to give Nagato something more to dodge. But as the angle of the Japanese battleship gets steeper and steeper, we are doing less and less damage, of course. And with the friendly Nelson going down from submarine's torpedoes, we are more or less alone at sea now, with only a friendly Scharnhorst 43 in the rear. But that's okay, I guess. Nagato does not know I'm about to pull off the exact same maneuver I did on the Aoba earlier on. While this being very risky, the Shan Horse is actually heading towards sea, which means I can try to isolate the engagement with Nagato alone, but only if I start turning out now, giving a flat broadside, and we get really lucky to only eat a few overpants. More torpedoes away, Nagato is turning out to bring his rear turrets to bear, which guarantees he will eat a couple of them. And as we shrug off that second shot and deny the Shanhol's firing angles on us, we dash back to cover. Third, Frag, the only kills on my team so far. And looking at the scoreboard, yeah, this is not ideal. Almost a 300 points difference and we are outnumbered with the B flank sort of collapsing. But we are still in the fight. We actually haven't taken that much damage, only using one of our heals so far. And speaking of heals, we will be activating our combat instructions now to start reloading it. And check it out. A cooldown that was almost 3 minutes long ends up being reduced to about 20 seconds. But that effect only works when the combat instructions are active. When this action time ends, the consumable will go back to their standard cooldown. Still, we shaved about, what, two minutes? Which, considering how much this heal can restore, is really, really strong. And no other ships at tier 6 is able to pull this off. Simple as that. With that done, we are ready to get back in the fight. To try and assist the friendly Scharnhorst, we are pushing yet again the D8 corner, this time though for good. Noticing some submarine pings, I sent out my airstrike and we actually get the kill on the U69. Quite lucky, since you all know how painful it can be to hunt down a submarine. A quick sonar activation to evade expected Scharnhorst torpedoes and we are coming for him. 4 vs 6. Our team managed to get a few kills on the B side, but with only Hamat and Genesenau facing an enemy Duke of York, Nelson, Sirocco and Z31, and the enemy Texas as a backup, they have a lot of pressure on them. Meanwhile though, it is time to brawl a Sharnhorse 43. Ironic, as my last video showcased how powerful this ship can be in close combat, though Almirante here does not really care. Our heal is off cooldown, and we really only have to worry about the German battleships, torpedoes and secondaries. Our own torpedoes are in the water again, trying to predict where Scharnhorst will turn in this melee, 
And we are also trying to land as many shells as possible to recharge our combat instructions. Unfortunately for us, and yes, I'll say it, we are not able to do that as our torpedoes connect too soon, granting us our Kraken unleashed before we can fully fill the bar. This means that after a short period of time, that progress bar will deplete rapidly and our consumables, including our heal, will have to go through their long cooldowns. But we are fine. Friendly Sharnholz 43 will survive and recover some HP while the both of us can capture C. The A cap is also within our reach, but I will let my teammate take care of that. I need to try and make my way to B to assist our Ramat and Gnezenau, latter which managed to sink the Duke of York actually. So, with the Scharnhorst on board with the plan and C secured, we head for the cap straight on. Enemy Sirocco is quite low, but he's not the destroyer currently capturing B, that would be the Z31. And as we take a little greedy salvo on the French destroyer, we are spotted unnecessarily. Also, our hydroacoustic just went out, so we might be trying to bite more than we can chew here. If the B cap was fully opened, I would have made a different play. But there are some islands to work with to at least try and block some torpedoes or even ambush the Texas right here. And look at that, our 8.9 km concealment coming in clutch as the Z31 smokes up and allows us to go dark, giving us just enough time to put that island between Texas and I. Some close calls on these torpedoes here, I'll admit more luck than skills on that one, but we also have to beware of Nelson Crossfire. High caliber medal achieved with a 130,000 damage dealt so far. And as much as I would also love to get the combat instructions back, as we use the enemy smoke as cover to remain concealed, I have to keep my momentum and stay aggressive. The Nelson seems quite busy with Geneza now and will not be able to assist when I inevitably rush the Texas. Alas, the port side torpedo tubes are not yet loaded, so we turn hard left and only need to tank that one 14-inch gun salvo from the USN Dreadnought, which either bounces on our belt or overpans our superstructure. Imagine a Nuremberg or any other tier 6 cruisers for that matter trying to do the same. At least we have the Texas dead to right. As we are turning away and before our torpedoes connect, let's make sure this time we feel our combat instructions, which we will be using instantly to get both our heal and hydroacoustic off cooldown. Texas destroyed. These torpedoes are devastating and we are quite safe to try and capture B uncontested. Well, except for the Z31 that decides to open up on us to reset and eats a chunk of damage in return. Torpedoes might be heading towards me, so with our hydroacoustic back online, better safe than sorry. Somehow, we turned this game into a 3 vs 3. And for the first time in a while, we are finally ahead on points. Friendly Scharnhorst will get a hold of A, as planned, and with us contesting B, the enemy team has to make a play and push into us now to win. The Genesana, on the other hand, is under a lot of pressure. Friendly Cruiser went down a few moments ago, and he is now the only target for all three remaining enemy ships. We are setting ourselves up to fire more torpedoes, both towards the Nelson and potentially the Z31, as our RPF keeps moving around. Genesenau will eventually go down, though not before taking the Sirocco with him. It is now down to Scharnhorst and I. Enemy Nelson here is also on a complete rampage, having basically wiped out most of our forces on this flank, securing himself a Kraken and still having a lot of HP left. Very dangerous target too, as my friendly battleship is unable to overmatch his plating. And well, with the Z31 still lurking around, this game is far from over. I will have to rely on that trusty island here, my APF, and hopefully the Scharnhorst's assistance. My goal is to stay undetected for as long as possible and set up a defensive position where I can once again try to use my torpedoes. My APF is locked on that destroyer though, and I will venture forward to see if I can actually catch him trying to push back towards the cap. Our hydroacoustic is also only up for a few more seconds, and without combat instructions, we won't have it for a long while. Z31 does not seem to be anywhere near this area, and APF is back on Nelson. 
So I will have to contend with launching torpedoes to try and slow down the British battleship's advance. If Scharnhorst manages to close the distance without taking too much damage, he will be able to eat that Nelson alive with secondaries and torpedoes, but that buffer time is in Nelson's favor. His 16-inch guns can really put a hurt to a Scharnhorst superstructure. And for now, there is little I can do. Tanking Nagato shells was as far as I could push this ship in this game, the rest being overall lower caliber, but I did not want it to test that theory on a Nelson at the time. Z31 briefly gets spotted heading to D. In a way this is good, as we won't get ambushed around these islands ourselves. One could even say running away right now could be a possibility, especially with all four caps secured and a healthy point advantage, but with that destroyer still in play, five minutes would be enough for them to potentially cap us back and catch up on points. So I have no choice but to stand my grounds and meet with Nelson after he manages to take out our Scharnhorst. Now note that last salvo was actually high explosive and unless Nelson is running expert loader, his next salvo will be too. Torpedo tubes will reload just in time and thankfully don't get knocked out either. I aggressively used my repair party here to maintain momentum after my engine got knocked out and with a proper prediction on Nelson slowing down, we connect all three torpedoes, enough to get the kill and basically ensure the win. Once again, failing to get enough main battery hits to get our instructions back, but we have to count our blessings. A lot of luck on these last engagements. I don't even think we ate a single citadel throughout the whole game, and we still have two heals to work with. Only one ship left, Z31 was not too healthy when last seen, and should not be too much of an issue for us to get rid of, but we have to find him first. While engaging Nelson, he was actually capturing D, but that cap is now untouched, meaning that the German destroyer is making it easy for us instead by charging our position. Well, we'll take it. This prevents me from a lengthy chase around the map, dodging torpedoes, trying to prevent him from flipping caps. We have to be careful still though, this ship has 150mm guns with some pretty mean armor-piercing shells, but I am risking a broadside to turn away from potential torpedoes. Here again we can see the struggle when dealing with angled destroyers. We are getting some penetration here and there, but mostly shatters. If the Z was full HP, this might have been a tougher fight, but we are actually going to lower his health down to 38 HP only. Which makes us stop firing. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know what you're thinking. Don't play with your food, Robin. Be merciful and finish this fight. But I wanted to see, alright? I wanted to see if I actually could get a close quarter expert medal, okay? Spoiler ahead though, we don't. These secondaries are pretty, pretty bad on this cruiser. They are only 100mm and can only pen 17mm of armor. So. We will eventually put the Z31 out of his misery already, secure our 8th kill and finish this domination game on heaven with a victory. 206,000 points of damage dealt, which I believe to be the European server damage record for the ship. More than half a million credits earned and 9,000 XP gained. We achieved Confederate, Dreadnought, Kraken Unleashed, First Blood and High Caliber out of 244 hits and 8 Citadels, 9 Torpedo hits and 5 Floodings, as well as a single Depth Charge hit, sinking 8 ships in the process. 3000 base XP. Yeah, for a tier 6 cruiser this is ridiculous. And even if we relied a lot on our teammates for the various ambushes and plays we managed to pull off, we still made the most out of the ship even when slightly under-tiered. Funny enough, the most damage we dealt was against battleships, thanks to the amazing torpedoes and their above average damage and range. And well, speaking of damage, we received nearly 60,000 in return, almost doubling our maximum ship HP, and yet survived with another heal to put to use. I mean, I cannot stress this enough, but for a tier 6 light cruiser, this is exceptional. Overall, quite a dramatic and action-packed game with no rest between engagements, which I hope was also a good example of how Almirante Cochrane can be commanded. 
With that said, this episode is coming to an end. Thank you very much for sticking all the way through. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you did not, well, a thumbs down, but stay tuned. Anyway, as always, there will be more content to come about World of Warships. Until next time, you have a good one and you take it easy.